Hey, good morning. I'm Frank from the tech marketing team here at Databricks. As you know, XML is a popular format for storing and exchanging structured data. And native XML is available now with Databricks runtime 14.3 and above. Native XML file format support enables ingestion, querying, and parsing of XML data for batch and streaming processing. Now, this won't replace the open source version of the Spark XML library. That library will continue to be supported, but doesn't have the same feature set for things like schema evolution or rescue data columns. So customers using DBR don't need to add that package anymore and will get additional optimizations and features. Okay, and then the demo is in a Databricks notebook. Actually, the notebook comes with a readme file that you see here. And it also comes with a couple of XML files and an XSD that we're using um, to run it and to explore those XML data sets. So the first one, and that's actually the core one that we will be using throughout this demo is a list of uh, endangered species. You see they all have a name, they have a year of discovery, the continent where they discovered an info sentence, and then it's this list of, uh, of species. And maybe one interesting thing to point out is they also come with an ID. And that ID is not an element, but it's an attribute of this um, species element. And um, I got an XSD for that as well, which looks like the, the classic W3 XML schema, a complex type a sequence of these elements and this single attribute that I was pointing out. And there's a couple of other files. There's actually one more um, that we will use for schema evolution. And then there's one more with a very different XML structure um, that we use for schema enforcement. All right, so let's jump to the notebook, which uh, looks like this. And I'm actually running the notebook for you again. So you see it's all fresh data. It's uh, calculated just right now, one second ago. And what we do is a couple of things. We set up um, the files that I'm loading. And um, then I want to go for the list um, for the first example. And this is the most basic thing what you can do with the new XML in chest. So basically what you do is spark.read and then you say format XML. And then you have to specify this row tag and we specify it as speci species and if we look back at the XML file, it's exactly this repeating element that we want to um, grab and, and filter out. So this species gives us row tag species, gives us all the species. This is how the data frame is looking like. And then if we take this data frame and we, we, we print the name and the ID and the info, you see it looks like this in a table. And you also recognize that the attribute um, is ingested as well. And it comes with this underscore attribute name, which is uh, which is great. Now, if we go to another example where we set the road tag to name, then you can guess we are filtering um, just for the name and, and this is the output. If we load a completely different XML file and Remember, there is no schema enforcement happening at the moment. We're not specifying an XSD yet, so we can actually load any any XML file. Um, there is one where we can uh, learn quite a bit from that. So it's like two, um, two rows. Um, not of all the columns are filled. So some, uh, the first row has a null entry here. It has no entry. But the second one comes with a more complex attribute. So this uh, list of apes that I'm loading here, they seem to have an ability. So that one is able to, to actually use sign language and you also know where this is coming from. They participate in a movie and they have different traits, which again is a list of, of these objects. And this is actually what I wanted to point out. There could be much more complicated XML structures like this list of apes where we have species and then personality and then traits and they have films and it's a list of films, um, etc. So also this um, is easily ingested and then represented in this way as a, as a column. And then the interesting example is if it's not matching 
um, and we enforce schema um, validation. So first of all, I provide my schema file here, and then I said rescued data column, and then um, the data that is not loaded is showing up here under corrupt record. So if you do a, a cache and then a movie DF select for the corrupt record, you can display um, this data. All right, and now we do the row validation um, with XML that is not matching. That's the one that we just had here. And now we have the happy path where it's matching. And then obviously we provide the XSD, it's all matching. So you get the output here. Okay, let's do something else. Let's uh, look into autoloader. And uh, some of you might know that we use autoloader to typically ingest files from folders or so S3 buckets um, or any other cloud object store. And um, in this case, I want to do the same. I want to ingest my XML file. Um, the thing about Autoloader is it's a streaming data source. And this is also why here it's not Spark Read, but Spark Read Stream. We always get a stream from Autoloader. To specify the format, we say cloud files. So cloud files is just a synonym for autoloader. This is the technical way to specify that we want to use autoloader. Then we need to give it a format. Remember, we do XML ingestion. Again, we need to give it a row tag, like the species, and then I give it the XSD file. I'll provide a schema location, and this is actually the location that autoloader is internally using to store the derived schema. So this was running already when I when I started the demo, and um, it's outputting the schema. And um, then there is actually a new element that I want to feed in here in this other cell. So it's the same XML file, but there are some appended species, and those species they have a new element. And um, if I do this Spark read stream, it's not it's not shown yet. It's not detected yet. But if I run a display DF, um, the stream will stop and it will say, hey, I found this new element and um, I can't read that element. So it's a new element with population and the value is 10. And um, then if I, um, if I rerun the thing and if I add schema evolution, add new columns, I allow the autoloader to um, to 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 do schema evolution, and I can have can have new added columns. And um, actually, the thing is, it's picking up the derived schema from this location. So once it fails, it detects the new schema, and then on the second run, and actually this add new columns is even default. On the second run, it would detect the new schema. And then you see the population is showing up here. And then if I run the display again, it will also show up here. It takes a second to spin up um, the stream and then you will see the new schema. And there it is. And now if I scroll to the right, you see the population column. It didn't exist for the for the old um, XML species, but it does exist for the new ones. And this is where the, um, the schema, the new schema was detected. And now I have the new schema and I can, can ingest um, data with the new schema. Um, same thing here. If I print the schema, it shows up here on the um, population. Now, Shifting gears and um, looking into SQL, I can just create a table and then say using SQL and pass those options, like the file that I want to ingest, which is um, actually coming from my repo here because I just checked out a repo. And then again, I specify the row tag. I do a select star from the table and you see that's the, the classic old um, XML file that I was using. Two more things I want to point out. There is a couple of um, SQL functions. There are a few more. I just have those two in the demo. One is giving you the schema of an XML. So if I do schema of XML and then I provide this XML, the output is the schema here. 
and the other one is why I have a structure and I convert it to an XML and then the output looks like this. Now with this, the demo um, is finished. And um, if you check it out on the Databricks Demo Center, like databricks.com slash demos, we also link um, to that notebook. Thank you for listening.